Hey guys, Adam and Brady here. We're gonna go through um, just an overview of our Brook City demo kit here. Um, we'll do kind of overview of the components, do a quick setup, and maybe go, try to go through a turn to show you how the game plays. Um, so for, we're gonna go ahead and look at this uh, the rule book here. I'm just gonna go through the setup just so you guys get a good idea how the game is set up and how modular it is. So first thing we're gonna do is place the game board. You'll see this cool game map. This is just a, everything here is prototype, <clears throat> but this right here is prototype. This is a, a strange size because the printer will only do this size, so we have some extra space on the top and bottom to put these card slots. Um, these won't be in the, the board itself. Second, we're going to choose our cops. So in our demo kit, <clears throat> we have Gabe Fulton right here, who I'm going to play as, and Brady over there has Selena Gonzalez, one-handed. The game does play one to four players, but our demo kit it just has two cops just for give you a taste of the game. Production costs because this thing is really over the top. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to shuffle up your, your cop deck. You pull out your uh, cop character card, which is the one that has your stress value and your, your special cop, basic ability. Your cop ID. Yeah, and that one goes in your play area. <clears throat> Put your, <clears throat> your deck next to it. And you're also going to grab one of these. Um, Did you go over the activation cards part of it? Yeah. I think it's later on, yeah. Um, and then the, you get your vehicle, uh, your starting police cruiser. And then we're going to take our cop miniatures corresponding to our characters, and they're going to go in any space in the BCPD. These actually shouldn't be here yet because we haven't done the vehicle setup. So that's, that's where we start. And then we're going to choose our criminal deck. For this demo kit, we have Slade Harper. It's a criminal deck. And it's worth mentioning right now that this, um, like he mentioned, Adam mentioned before, it's completely modular, so you just choose which cops, which which criminal, which case you want. They're all independent, so you can just mix and match however you want. So the first thing you do is you pull out the suspect card, and you put that out here in the player, the, the criminal play area, and then you take the the setup card, Slade setup, setup card here, and you follow the directions. The directions say, place Sk uh, Slade, here's his miniature right here, in Nightscape Theater, and every location on these cards will have a coordinate that corresponds to the map, so you can easily see where they go. So this is F19. F19 is right there. He starts in Nightscape Theater. Slade runs that place. Then you're going to search his deck for an investor card, which we'll look through when we find our first investor, which is Yolanda Cruz. You can see the trait down there. It says investor. And she's going to go and play. And then and it says to flip this card over. You'll notice that she has the asset trait, which means uh, when assets come into play, there's asset tokens. They represent important things that uh, pop out of the criminal deck. And that's the coordinate. Q18. Uh, so we Lockwood. got a Q18. The... Lockwood Art Museum. So in this, in, in uh, Slade's deck, the assets uh, really strengthen the, the crimes that come into play. So you want to shut down the assets as soon as possible. And for the case, we have the Slain Diplomat. So we're going to remove all clue cards from the case deck. He's referencing the uh, setup uh, special rules card that you pull out of the deck. It's double-sided, so it's easy to find. So we're we'll looking we'll at anything with that clue trait. And when clues come out, they have these, uh, these icons down here, which represent tokens. So we find the corresponding tokens, and we put them into play at the listed coordinates. It is important to note that every case plays differently. So not every case is going to have all the clues out at first. Um, some might not have any. And after you set this up, you flip it over, and this is the special rules card that tells you all the special rules of the case. So we have the victim's remains, which is this uh, token, the blue token. It goes active side up on uh, F17 in the morgue. We have the murder scene, which is this computer disc here. It goes to um, L31 That's at the uh, warehouses. The Brickway warehouse. Then we have the uh, Buckles Mahoney witness. And he is the Red Star. He appears at Q13 at the Central Hotel. Or Capital Hotel, sorry. And then we have the uh, Disrupted Syndicate Funding Event, which is at uh, F, or sorry, E5, Liberty Bank. It's the green token. And those have two sides. Like I said, there's active and, 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 and inactive. That just uh, Those are referenced by card effects. And the dump revolver is actually uh, in the suspect's custody, so it, he, well... The knowledge of it is he dumped it off in the yeah. relic woods. So we, we have to that just represents we have to question the suspect about where the, where the revolver is and try to find out where he hit it. In this case, he hit it in the relic woods, which we know mechanically, but we don't know thematically because it's it's active. It needs to be inactive for us to interact with it. Now we're preparing our vehicle deck. So this is the vehicle deck right here. Any vehicle you can get in the game is face down. If it's a special vehicle like the police cruisers or these boats, 
They go off to the side in a special deck. So you can, they have special abilities here that tells you how to acquire them. And, and you start with your, your police cruiser. It goes into any street next to BCPD. It's usually best to place it where your cop can hop in, so adjacent to your cop. Um, so you're ready to go right when the game starts. Then we're going to prepare the lead deck. Now leads, there is a lead card for every location on the board. So there's 40 leads. Not every space, but every location. Yeah, every location. Which location is a uh, walled-in area. What leads are... Uh, overall, is there just a little special ability you can go find during the game if you're out running around town, you can pick something up. Like, for example, this first one is a helicopter lift, which is at B30. That is what we call the active lead. It is marked with a token. B30 is over here at the airport. And it usually goes on top of the deck just to show you that that's the active lead, but we have, we have a little spot here on this for active lead on this mat. Um, there are clue, There are cases that interact with the lead deck. You have to go there to do something. Otherwise, it's just a, something you can go pick up if you want to, if you got some free time between, during your turn if you don't have like a lot of crimes out. And one thing to note is that both on vehicles and leads, they just count as cards you control. So it's always better to control more cards because there's a lot of effects that make you ditch cards you control. And if you have a good tactic in play, you want to shield it with other cards you control, like, for example, a lead card. Yeah, for example, this helicopter lift lets you discard it to move to any location on the board. So it's pretty useful if you want to get somewhere pretty quickly. Um, next, we're going to do the tokens, which we already did. They're in this nice little container here. We have hunches, stress tokens, progress tokens, influence, and your assets. And you can see they're double-sided, so stress has one and five on double sides. Um, and then we have our vehicle co vehicle tokens that right there. These correspond to the cards. And then finally we deal out these turn cards which mark when you go. So this is the cop turn after you do your turn, you flip it over so you can see what the other turn So goes. this acts as a reference and also as an indication of who's gone because there's no there's no fixed turn structure, turn sequence, so any cop can activate, but this tracks when you've gone, so there's, you know, less confusion about whose turn it is. And we we draw four cards for our starting hand. And as you can see, that, that's the setup. It's the same no matter what you're playing. You, um, so any combination of suspect, criminal, and cop, you can mix and match all those decks and, and get different combinations of different scenarios you can play. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go through a turn real quick just to show you, give you an overview of how the game plays. Um, you want me to go first since yeah, you're you can. doing camera work? So the first thing we do, if you look at your turn card, you can pull that up for them so you can see it, is you do your dispatch phase. So you refresh any cards they might have exhausted in your... In, then you're going to draw and resolve criminal card. So I draw this, it's and boring. I'm getting retail pressure. So this is a crime. Crimes are very common in the suspect deck. They are represented by the criminal's crew figures. He is going to be the crew figures going to be placed at the corresponding coordinate, which is Q8 down here at the Queen's Queen Bishop Pawn Shop. And then this goes in my crime area. If I don't take care of that on my turn, it's going to activate. And any uh, Street Masters backers who are curious, uh, the reason there are no color indications on these is because these actually don't, the, the crimes don't move. They're fixed at this location. Yes. So you can, so you can always, will always tell you, oh, this is that criminal. That, that's why the uh, location art is so prominent, so you can actually see where it's at and what figure it is. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm, on my turn, my act phase, I can move, play a card, or do an action in any order I choose. The first thing I'm going to do is play a card. I'm going to play military experience. It is a tactic, which means it goes into play, and it makes all my reckless um, encounters better. And, which is that gun icon. And gave life to be reckless. So that's my play a card step. And as part of it, once during each step of your turn, you can enter or exit a vehicle once. So as part of that play a card step, I'm going to hop into my vehicle. So I take my figure, and I hop into my adjacent vehicle, and I put my figure on the car just to mark that he's in that vehicle. And in the final game, there will be little clips on these vehicles where you can socket in a colored uh, token to represent which car, so you can tell who's driving what in case you're driving matching cars. In this case, we're going to be all driving police cruisers. And so the way movement works typically is everybody moves three. You can move three spaces if you're walking. If you're driving a car, you can move three streets. You can see the streets are differentiated by these uh, groups of four squares, four spaces. So when you move a car, it's going to go by street. If you move a figure, it's going to move by space. So I'm in my car right now. And move values can be broken up, so if you move one space and then hop in a car, you still move two streets. So the value stays the same, but you just change what counts as movement, as whether you're on foot or in a vehicle. So we can't make much progress on the crime on the case yet, because in this case, 
you to, you have to put hunches on cards to make progress. So every time you successfully encounter something, you can put a hunch you have on a clue. So that way, like you, we want to get clue hunches built up on the clues to make progress on the case. Yeah, successfully encountering a target means you you actually don't have to place progress, but you have to at least meet or exceed the resistance. And you'll notice that resistances, all targets have these resistances. This means how many successes cancel out during an encounter. So you want to boost up your your uh, values. So I want to work my way down to this crime here because I don't like it. Look, unfortunately, I can't go through the river unless I had a boat. So I'm going to go ahead and drive. I'm going to go one, two, three. Now the police cruiser has a special ability that says while um, this car, did, well, sorry, while driving this vehicle, you may move one additional street during your move step if you have at least one crime in your crime area. I do, so I flick on my sirens and I'm gonna move an extra space. As that last, um, that last bit, of, during, during my move step, I'm gonna hop out of my vehicle right here, and then I'm gonna do my basic action for my action step. Game's basic action lets him move up to two spaces and then encounter recklessly with two dice. See the reckless, point that reckless symbol for me. Right up there. Yeah, that means it's a reckless encounter. So he's gonna go, one, I only want to move one, so I don't need to move both of them. So normally it would be two dice, but my military experience tactic that I put out, actually it doesn't give me extra dice, it, it reduces her uh, resistance by one. So I'm rolling two dice, and she has normally two, but she's going to have one resistance because of my military experience. So I got one success and two hunches. If I had hunches, I could spin those to make those successes, but I don't, so I'm just going to gain those. Now, I successfully encountered because she only had one resistance and I rolled one success. So I'm going to place a hunch down here on Buckles Mahoney because he's right here in the hotel and I'm close to him. So maybe maybe uh, Selena can follow up and maybe go question Buckles. And I'm going to keep my other hunch. And that's the end of my act step, my act phase. So then I go down to the crime phase. I activate cards in my crime area from left to right. So I have this retail pressure here. It says... Activate. Either place one influence on this card or suffer one stress. Then, if there is three influence on this card, discard them and Slade gains one influence. So, if Slade ever has five influence, we lose the game. So we want to make sure that Slade doesn't get too much influence. Um, I'm going to go ahead and suffer one stress for this because I haven't suffered any yet and I think that I'll be okay. I want to block that influence for now. So that, then I draw one card and that, then I flip my cop turn over and that marks that I'm done. Now Selena has to go. So Selena draws a crime, retail pressure at the uh, Apollo Coffee Shop, which is B14. B14. So this is going to go in my crime area here. So we have two retail pressures out. And I think I might actually, let's see if I have any good reckless. I do, I actually have a reckless one here. So this is an encounter, if you're in a location you may encounter a target. So. She, so one of Selena's uh, uh, main mechanics is she can encounter things that she is not actually at. She can uh, encounter things from a distance because she's a sniper, so she has a lot of, um, she's got good vantage all over the city. So I'm actually going to move, uh, what are we going to encounter here? I think I might make my way toward the disrupted funding, uh, disrupted syndicate funding at the bank. So I'm going to hop in my car for my move step, and I'm going to move one two, three, and I do have a crime, so I'll move one more, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hop out because I, I do better when I'm in locations, so I'm gonna hop into the Cooper's uh, grocery and hop out. So he's hopping out during his, are you doing an action or a card? Uh, I'm doing my card right during now. During his play card step, he's gonna, he's gonna exit the game. Oh, sorry, first I'll do my action because I wanna gain a hunch for my action. So I actually, because I, I, I wanna have a hunch so if I successfully encounter uh, this this uh, target that I can place a Hunch on a crime. For your actions, if you can either do an action listed on a card, or you can gain a hunch, you can move again, you can do an interact, or you can do something on a card This is action, like your basic action. So I gained a hunch, I'll place it in my area, and then I'm going to go ahead and play my sniper training card. Now this lets me uh, recklessly encounter, with two dice, if you are in a location, you may encounter any target on the board that is not in the same location. I'm going to encounter my crime over here at Apollo Coffee, and so I get two dice. Now, Ooh. this is cool. Good time to do it. Good time to roll this. So I rolled a regular success and a critical success. That counts as a success, plus I got to roll another die. So I got three successes versus his zero uh, resistance. So I actually busted this crime. So, so, he, so normally you would put 
one progress per success on there, and if you ever reach the threshold, you bust it. So that crime is busted. So this gets discarded. The uh, figure is discarded. Some uh, cards have bust effects that you resolve when they're busted. This one is like just discarded. Slate, for example, and and suspects are special. They never get discarded. They just resolve the bust effect and stay in play. So I don't have to spend any of my clues on my roll or my hunches so I can spend this hunch that I just rolled. I'm going to place this actually on the dumped revolver because that one's kind of tough. We have to question the slate for that one. So that was my card. I did my action. So now I resolve crimes. There are none. Now I just draw a card. So now we're going to do the criminal activation. So we go, th we go through and we're going to resolve any activate effects on these crime cards. So, for example, the, f the syndicate funding, or funding the syndicate. If an investor has three influence on it, discard three influence from that investor and Sling gains one. So these investors, if they ever build up three, it gives him one. Um, luckily, there are none, so we're not going to activate that. Yolanda says, move all influence from each blackmail card to this card. So luckily, Brady busted his blackmail card, and I blocked my influence. So there's no influence going to Yolanda this turn. That's it for that. So then we go down to the case turn. And we're gonna so go there are no activate effects on these cards. These are all ones we have to interact with. So there are no activate effects. Now we just draw a case card. So the case card says syndicate cover-ups. It is an event. You can discard one hunch from a clue. If unable, each cop suffers a stress. So let's just take one off of, the, off of Buckles, I guess. So Buckles is losing his hunch. So that kind of sets us back a little bit. Um, and then we go ahead and flip our turn cards. And then it goes back to us. A whole a new round begins. So that's kind of that's how the game works. Um, you play until you fulfill the victory conditions on the case. For example, this one it says if the cops control all five clue tokens, the cops win. So if we collect all those clues, we win. So um, yeah, in this in this case, this particular case, we have to interact with these different um, clue cards to flip these over. And then when they're flipped over, we can just go collect them. And when we have all of them, we win. So and this is a kind of an introductory case. We will say also that Slade is is more of a straightforward criminal. He's he's usually pretty easy to keep under control, but he, if you ignore him too long, he can win quickly. But he's pretty easy to keep under control. So yeah, he's, he's a nice he's a nice baseline criminal. Yeah, he's he's designed so when you play, he can like be your intro to the more difficult cases because if you have a difficult criminal and a difficult case, it can be a nightmare to get through sometimes. So we like to have these different op these kind of. Difficulty scaling, where everything's modular, so any other modular elements get added into the game increase the difficulty. Yeah. So when you're playing a Slade, he's a good baseline to start building stuff around him and, and adding more difficult elements. We, into we the have game. modular elements called like rival and allies. If you're familiar with Street Masters, it works similar to this. So if you're playing Slade a lot and you start to get the hang of him, and he's pretty easy. You can start throwing in some rivals to bump up the difficulty a little bit and keep playing him in different cases and, and trying out different combinations. Yeah, and and the. The majority of the cases will have your victory conditions. The majority of the criminals will have their, their loss conditions. And as always, if a cop is ever fired by suffering stress up to their threshold, everybody loses because yes. you have to be a team on this. So the other um, important aspects of the you'll see used in other cases, for example, is the lead deck. Because a lot of the cases interact with the lead deck as opposed to having all the clues out in play. So a lot of the clues are hidden. So you have to go get leads to find clues. So there's a lot of... There's a lot of um, different thematic things happening in cases, and there's a lot of design space. This is just kind of your intro, so it's a little easier to see what's going on in the map. One other important element that we didn't do in this game is anytime you move from a, from a location into a street space, you have the option of commandeering a vehicle. So let's say I moved out there and I, my cop car was either discarded or way back over here. I needed to get somewhere quickly. Should so show the action on the cop car. To yeah, the cop car, for example, has an action that says, if you are driving this vehicle, move your figure to any location, then discard this card. So you can basically just... It's a very... When you're playing solo, you'll be using that ability a lot more often. So you'll be... So I'm going to hop out, and I'm going to hop out of the streets, and I'm going to pull out a Bradville, which is just... This is placeholder art. But I would get the corresponding token, um, which, you know, let's, there it is right there, Bradville. And that is my new car, and that has a different ability. Yeah, you'll notice all these hat cars have different little abilities. Like this one, for example, lets you do uh, your cautious encounters a little better because it represents you being undercover in a different car. And so yeah, that's another modular element. Is as more vehicles are added to the game, there's more, there's more variety. And like if you're commandeering your vehicle, you don't know what you're gonna get, and you know maybe you might get a moped that can drive through, drive through buildings. That's kind of fun. Um, so yeah, it's another element of the game that 
mixes yeah. things up. So this is a, this is a general overview of what you'll experience when playing. We can do a, a full playthrough, and we'll probably actually preview different different decks to show off some of the uh, the variety we have in the game. Like I said, these are kind of like the introductory ones to kind of get you into the groove of everything. So, and this um, is also we also just kind of wanted to showcase this demo kit. This is what we sent to a few people um, to kind of preview the game, get people talking about the Kickstarter. Um, so yeah, this this is kind of, this is a good idea of what the game will look like. Uh, in the final version. Yep, so hope you guys check out and get excited about Brook City because we are very pumped for it. Thanks, guys.